to off. The transfer pump will continue to run and purge air from the fuel system for about 25 seconds. Repeat the process until all air has been eliminated from the system. Then tighten the banjo bolt at the supply line to the fuel injection pump. Once you're satisfied that all the air has been purged from the system, attempt to start the engine. Once it starts, be sure to check for any fuel leaks while the engine is running. To purge air from the high pressure side of the fuel system, first loosen any two of the fuel line connections at the cylinder head to cylinders one, three, and four. Then crank the engine until fuel without any air bubbles squirts from the loosened fuel lines. Tighten the fuel line fittings to 40 newton meters or 28 to 30 foot pounds. Proper torque here is critical. Then start the engine and raise the engine speed to between 1200 and 1500 RPM. The engine may run a little rough and be quite noisy until the remaining air has been purged from the other high pressure lines. Now give our last review question a try. During an engine running fuel pressure test on the pressure side of the transfer pump, what should a normal reading be? A, at least 10 PSI. B, about 8 PSI. Or C, not more than 7 PSI. A is the correct answer. An engine running pressure test of the pressure side of the transfer pump should show a minimum of 10 PSI on a system that is operating normally. With all the enhancements to the 24-valve Cummins diesel engine, you might want to register for a training course to come up to speed on this next generation of diesel power for Ram trucks. There are two new courses available at your local training center. A course that covers the base engine is number 0140308, and the diesel fuel system course is number 0841016. That's all the time we have for this month's program. MasterTech will continue to keep you up to date on the 24-valve Cummins diesel engine as new information comes available. And stick around for an update on trailer towing with Dodge truck and Jeep vehicles.